is happening people and welcome to today's video. Now if you caught my last video, you'll have heard me explain that I recently went from a kind of softer body weight of about 255 pounds down to a relatively lean 230 and I did the entire process without counting on calorie or tracking my macros or downloading any apps on my phone. So immediately after I made that statement, I got a decent amount of people reaching out to me wondering what diet I followed, what I did, how I was able to do that. So I thought I'd take this video today and just kind of lay out some of the very common sense principles that I followed to get through my fat loss journey. Now, I want to make it very, very clear just before we even get into this that I have absolutely nothing against those of you who do count calories. If you count calories and it works for you, then I think you should absolutely keep doing it because it's great. And I think it is an amazing tool to help people learn about portion size as well as just how many calories are in certain objects. However, I do think there is a difference between being busy and being productive. And I think for a lot of people out there, just counting that minutia is more of a busy thing than it is actually doing anything to help people get to their actual goals. Like for me myself, I have never counted calories, I've never counted macros, uh, and for a couple of reasons. Number one, if I try to keep track of that small type of micro data, counting my steps, counting my calories, things like that, I will obsess over those numbers in like a weird neurotic way. It's, it's not really, really good for me. And then number two, it's not really sustainable, right? Because I'm 42 years old and I have things going on in my life and I'm never going to check out how many calories are in my toothpaste. I'm a grown man, I have plenty of things to keep me occupied and hopefully counting calories is not one that needs to take up any of my time or energy. However, like I said, if it works for you, I think you should stick with it or at least use it for a tool for a certain amount of time to help you along your entire eating journey for life. But if you find that you are anything like me and you appreciate things to be just a little bit more simple, then here are some really common sense principles and approaches that I used for my personal fat loss. And the very first one is that I needed to realize that there are two main ways that I look at eating. The first of which is semi-conscious and the second is conscious. Now, since you're watching this, I'm gonna assume that you understand that in the idea of a fat loss journey, uh, that something like chicken and broccoli is probably a better choice for you than pizza or ice cream. Now, I'm not saying pizza or ice cream is necessarily bad. There is a place, there is a time, but I'm saying, Generally speaking, if you come to me and you say, I want to lose body fat, I'm not pushing you a pizza. You're going to be getting the chicken and the broccoli. The truth of it is, most of us know what we need to do to get to where we want to go as far as fat loss and things like that. The problem is actually getting it done. Now, when I am eating semi-consciously, I still know the right from wrong. I know what I need to do to get to my goals, but there's a lot more wiggle room in there, right? So if I'm at little Susie's birthday party, I wanna eat some cake, then I'm gonna eat the cake. If it's Friday night and I wanna eat some ice cream, then I'm gonna eat the ice cream. It's not that big of a deal when I'm eating semi-consciously. Now, for something like this, when I wanted to start losing body fat, if I'm getting ready to lose weight for a competition or I have a collaboration or a photo shoot where I need to have my shirt off or I just want to look better during summer, then I need to eat consciously. It needs to switch over. And by eating consciously, what I mean is that every single bit of food or anything that passes past my lips, I stop and I ask myself the question, is this going to bring me closer to or further away from that goal that I have? And then I acted accordingly. So the very first thing that I needed to do on this fat loss journey was just switch my brain from like, hey, there's not really wiggle room anymore. We're just going to keep everything tight and straight nice and neat and clean. Now, the second principle that I used, which was the first kind of restriction, was that I cut out any calorie containing beverages, mints, snacks, gum, anything like that. If anything had calories that was not part of my actual meals, then they got cut. Now, I personally choose not to go the sugar-free route or the artificial sweetener route. Um, just because over the course of my life, I've learned the lesson that you can't really get something for nothing, right? Everything costs something. So I know right now science is telling us that there is no real side effects to the sweeteners and things like that. But for me personally, I just don't trust it. I mean, like six years ago, science was telling us that smoking cigarettes was good for us. So I'm not completely sold out. If you want to believe science, you go ahead and knock yourself out. But me personally, I would rather just keep my discipline a little bit more strong and just wait a little bit longer for the actual thing than kind of the knockoff sugar-free version more often. But again, that is me personally. If you want to go sugar-free, knock yourself out. Principle number three was that I made sure that I was moving 
every single day, not counting my workouts, right? When I lifted weights and did that kind of stuff, this does not count towards that. Mark Bell is really big on like a 10 minute walk, but I think every single day you should be either walking, running, hiking, playing some sort of sport, playing catch with your kid, go out to a local park and pick up trash. If you have some sort of yard, do more landscaping or start a garden, do something where you are constantly moving around so that if you were tracking your steps, you'd be getting a lot of them, right? Cause you just gotta kinda keep that engine moving all day long until it comes nighttime and time to sleep, at which time you need to shut all of that down. But during the waking hours, you would just wanna be randomly moving around as much as possible to burn as many calories as you can. Fourth principle I followed was to get some sort of protein every three hours that I was awake. Now, for me personally, along with that serving of protein, I was getting some sort of vegetable or fruit along with two fish oil caps and at least 24 to 32 ounces of water every three hours that I was awake, no matter how many hours I was awake that day. So no matter what, virtually every single meal that I ate, virtually every single protein serving stayed the same. But for principle number five, if I was going to have a bigger carb serving or a bigger fat serving with my protein for that meal, then I tried to do that after a hard workout. Sometimes that made fitting a hard workout in just so I could have that food. So if I wanted a big bowl of pasta, well, then I had to earn it. Which also inevitably means that on the days when I did not work out with weights, there was no big extra portion meal. The only time that I had any sort of extra portion of fat or carbs was after a really pretty taxing workout with weights. Principle number six had to do with what I was allowed to eat. And I broke it down like this. If it had a face, if it had a mom, or it grew out of the ground, then I can eat it. If it didn't, or was a highly processed version of one of those aforementioned things, then I cannot. That was it. Principle number seven was that I tried to eat out at restaurants as little as I possibly could, and I especially tried not to do it any more than one time a week. Now that meant a lot of meal prep, it meant a lot of meal planning, a lot of Tupperware, and a lot of homemade jerky, which is what my last video was about. And that was the biggest number one hack that I have ever done in a fat loss journey ever. It's a lot cheaper, a lot easier than you're thinking. So if you're looking for ways to meal prep and just have protein sources with you all the time, definitely go back and check my last video. Look, for most of you watching this, if you're gonna eat healthy out at a restaurant, that means you're gonna tell the waiter that you want like boiled chicken and plain broccoli and plain rice and he's gonna bring it out to you. And congratulations, you just ate healthy at a restaurant and you paid like 18 times what you would have paid if you just cooked it at home. So next date night, get a little bit more creative or choose to cook together or do something like that, but find ways to eat your own food at your own house that you prepared yourself. Principle number eight is stay away from the scale, at least for the first month. You have to find other ways to track your progress here, all right? Because if you jump on the scale, then you're gonna wanna keep jumping on the scale. And in that first month, there's gonna be all type of fluctuations and it is not worth the emotional roller coaster of like, oh, I'm doing good, oh, I'm doing bad, oh, I'm doing good, oh, I'm doing bad. Like, that is not worth it whatsoever. It's not worth cortisol, anything. Look, I track my progress in two different ways. Number one is how my clothes fit. So if a shirt was tight around my belly and now it's not tight around my belly, then I'm doing better. If I'm adding holes to my belt as I go along, then my waist is shrinking. That means that I'm getting better. And then the second way that I will track my progress is a progress picture every two weeks in the exact same spot with the exact same lighting. And I'm talking like standing on a dot the exact same spot, and I don't care if you wanna flex or you don't wanna flex, but just do the exact same thing throughout the entirety of your fat loss journey and uh, track your progress that way. I know some people wanna measure and things like that. I'm not a massive fan of that just because unless from week one to 16, you do the exact same measurement in the exact same spot without any variation whatsoever, then you're kind of wasting your time on that. And I. I do not get the exact same size. I, I don't, I've never done measurements, I'm, I'm lying to you. And then principle number nine is realize that this has to be forever. Look, diets have been proven time and time again that they don't work. If you wanna use this method, cut down for a competition, that's how I and virtually every athlete that I've ever trained has cut down for their competitions. It's not that hard, it's not really that tough. You do not need to spend the time counting calories necessarily or your macros if you have a good idea 
of what you're looking at. Diets imply an end. These are just eating principles that you can either choose to do as tightly as possible in a conscious eating situation where you're asking yourself every single day, is this moving me closer towards or further away from my actual goal or semi-consciously where most of the meals going in your body are still healthy meals based on performance, based on those types of things. However, there's a little bit more wiggle room so that you're not so just like locked in in your goals that you can't have a good time at a birthday party or on a holiday. But really the whole idea of all these little common sense principles is that it will change your relationship with food and you won't be able to see it the same so that throughout the rest of your life you are doing smart choices and smart little decisions that are sustainable that you can literally do no matter you are 20 years old or you are 80 years old it still will apply to a healthy eating habits as well as just a healthier lifestyle and better performance overall. But that is what I have for you guys today. I thank you guys so much for all your patience, all your time, all your support for the channel, everything like that. And I do hope, especially to each and every single one of you reach out to me, you will check this out and you will find it simple and helpful so you guys can just apply a few smart choices towards your eating that will hopefully lead to a leaner, stronger, better performing you. And if you ever want to get really, really lean, trust me, things can always get stricter, right? So you don't necessarily need to start out counting calories or macros but once you get down to a certain body fat if you find that you stall you can always add that in to get stricter and stricter and more crazy and neurotic and whatever it needs to be to get to whatever goals you have set for yourself i would tell you guys that i'm going to catch up with you later in the week but it's not true this time of year i kind of slow down and try to focus on the holidays and family and things like that and then hit it hard right at the beginning of the year the beginning of the year should have an add-on program as well as two other programs being released very very quickly near the beginning as well as a ton of content a whole sandbag series i have a lot of ideas it's just this time of year i try to focus more on like the important life things more so than work and so that's why things are a little bit slower but i do still appreciate all the support guys i have over 800 videos through a ton of different playlists to help you guys navigate the channel uh, there's plenty plenty of information here to check out i thank you guys so much for watching every single video the shares the subscribes the likes the everything all the support through the programs through the supplements through all of it just it all goes towards the end goal of making this channel possible and i absolutely love it i love my life and i thank each and every single one of you for this opportunity so i won't catch up with you later in the week but go out do something amazing keep working on people be nice to each other it's christmas time come on